So yeah. I would do that. And then even I felt the, I used to feel really bad during Ramadan, like not fasting and then mm. pretending to be hungry. Like I felt like, wow, oh, no, no, what a good, performance no. I'm putting on. <laughs> What a performance. Like I would I would come to like because sometimes you know, because the big thing is also like celebrating together and breaking the fast together. So I go to like a, a, uh, you're a like I'm full house. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, I gotta pretend like I was fasting. So I come be like, yeah. oh man, this feels so good. I haven't eaten all day. Woo, you know, just like you eat like, like a bro- piece of broccoli or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm drinking broccoli. Like, yeah. man, I'm so hungry. It's been starving. But, but I would I would have to like you guys got any soda crackers, right? <laughs> truly. <laughs> Welcome back everyone to episode number 24 of the Johnny Rogers Show. My guest today is Gulid Abdi. He's a Toronto-based comedian, actor, writer, and one-fourth of the multi-award winning sketch troupe called Tall Boys to Men. He's performed at Off JFL, Montreal Sketch Fest, and the Toronto Fin and the Toronto Fringe Festival, get that right, plus the CBC show Tall Boys is back for a third season to explore everything from infant sleep training to the country's national sport. Gulid, how you doing, man? pretty good man you know like uh i i think with each consecutive wave i'm slowly figuring out how to uh make home feel like the world you know like i'm not (laughs) outdoors as much so being like how do i make being indoors exciting and i think i'm getting a little better at it i think i'm resting a little more you know and just being Mm. like all right you know it's okay if the the walk today is to the kitchen back to the room to the couch it's like that's that's my commute you know <laughs> i've done sort of a similar thing but like i i was missing house parties so much so i just Dude. bought myself a bunch of red solo cups and then i bought some led strips i put them up top turned on the party lights and my girlfriend and i we just played beer pong <laughs> that's great actually that's that's very sweet i just love listen that. to some music <laughs> it's like yeah let's pretend was, yeah. we're partying I know that's I do like yeah like when 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 things started easing up a little bit restriction wise and I did go out and hang out with friends I found myself being like oh you know those because when I was out we were all out a lot more I didn't really care those many times I was like I just want to be indoors because I'm more of an introvert but I was like oh I actually miss people you know I miss hanging out and just shooting this shit not really doing anything and just being like oh I came home being like I feel good. I saw some people, I hung out, had some food, and then that was it. I accomplished so much. <laughs> yeah, it really does feel like that. Yeah, there was something to those, like, going to open mics, like I'd see all the time at um, Social Capital Theater, and, like, every time you'd walk in to sign up for an open mic, there'd just be a bunch of comics just, like, in their notebook, chilling, or just talking shit over whatever, right? And it just felt like that kind of energy just amped you up that like, oh, there's a show is about to happen. Like, yeah, <laughs> some jokes are going to be great. Some are going to be terrible, but that's the whole fun of it. <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I'm still, I'm still guilty of like a lot of times writing down a thought that I think is going to carry me through a set. And then 15 seconds later being like, oh, there's nothing here. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Just the feeling that idea leave you in the moment is such a soul yeah. crushing. It's just like, uh. Yeah, I, I've definitely, I, I've overestimated my abilities many times. And I still do it. Like, because yeah. every time I tell myself, this will be the moment. And one day it will be, just not now. <laughs> yeah, like just not <laughs> in this second. Not right now, no, no. Um, the word that you chose was patience. Do uh, you want to tell everybody what... Um, why patience was your your specific word that you wanted yeah i mean uh i uh i think pandemic really brought to mind i have a lot of anxiety that i just kind of live with you know like even getting on stage is very anxiety inducing um and, and performing and i've tried many ways to um like talk myself out of it uh, and sometimes it does work where I tell myself it's going to be all right. You're not going to, cause sometimes it feels like I'm going to physically die, you know, yeah. uh, when it's just silence for your entire set. But, um, the pandemic has really, uh, my anxiety has hit a peak where I'm like, there's no, there's not much, I'm uh, 
I think I'm feeling as much as that as I possibly can. And at this point, I think it's hitting an unhealthy level mm. where like, I'm like, this is, I think this is going to ruin me mentally. So I'm trying to let go of the things I can't control. Just be patient, you know, being like, okay, like here, the career is going to be what the career is going to be. You know, the pandemic is going to be what's going to be like of being like, do your best, keep up to date. But like, I can't single-handedly end this pandemic. I can't single-handedly make my career go exactly where I want it. Being like, there's so much that's out of my control. So just having patience and just letting go of that stuff. I think um, for a lot of people and like, obviously the pandemic is a pandemic. Like it's a, you know, a very dangerous thing that time that we're in right now too. But I think it did force a lot of people to kind of like turn the mirror on themselves and be like, all right, what do I need right now? Cause if I don't start giving myself what I need right now, like I'm going to go insane. And we saw how fast, like when you take away, it's almost like when you're trying to get an addict to stop doing something, if you just take away the thing that they're distracting themselves with, they, they go crazy. Yeah. Like it, like uh, if you, for example, took like um, a 12 step, like AA program and we're like, all right, you guys are done drinking booze, but guess what? No coffee. Mm -hmm. like, what? Cause that's the thing they're using to distract themselves from drinking booze. They're, they get into coffee or they get into cigarettes or they get into like some other thing to like distract themselves instead of being like, okay, why do I feel like I need these things? True. And it's probably yeah. because they have anxiety or they have like some level of like depression. It's all just been distraction. Really? You make yourself oh, feel mean, good. That's... And then, you know, Oh, absolutely. I was like, yeah, that's, that's been most of, and sometimes like letting myself just be distracted, you know, um, because I think I saw someone uh, use the term raw dogging reality, which is like you're sober. <laughs> that should be like, the title I, of the episode. <laughs> yeah, like they, I think the person, it was a joke, I think Jabuki Yankwe, a comic from the States, wrote like whenever they forget their their AirPods or, or their headphones at home, they just their ears are raw dogging reality, you know? And so I good, truly so think that's like, there's moments where even during the pandemic where I'm like, you know what? I just want to get high. I think I've I've had too much reality and I just <laughs> I want enough, an escape, man. you know? I just it's 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 a lot. Yeah. And so people have different things. Some people do bubble baths, light a candle for me. I'm like, let me let me, let me smoke some weed, let me watch a movie, let me play some right video now, games. Man. I need something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. It's like so I need something because it's just yeah, it's just too much of the mind and being like, I, I need I need to Mm -hmm. like release a little bit of pressure you know that's the thing too is like understanding your own limits and i think being patient with yourself in terms of like you're not going to be able to always be like career focused 99 percent of the day like that's absurd to be like even thinking in that regard and like i always try to go back to like putting my mind in like a child state basically it's like how did how was I, how did I find happiness without uh, a career goal or without like worrying about this or without worrying about that? And it's like, you really break down like what you're like, oh, it was like, you know, connection or making someone laugh or like, you know, doing something relaxing. Like we want to do a bubble bath and it's like, yeah, go have your bubble bath, whatever you want to do. But that stuff is uh, so we realize so important because I, I think before the anxiety was just getting treated with like everything else, like medication, like just here, just take this, mm -hmm. go away. It's like, it's not really helping. I don't, I don't think. I mean, it was, it was like, it, it's, it's, I think part A, part B, you know, part one, part A, one part B, like <laughs> it was doing something for me. But even I remember, like, if I look back on, you know, before COVID, I did have moments where I was like, oh, wow, I'm, I had this feeling and I wasn't really, even aware that like oh i'm anxious you know mm. i just thought this is a very normal feeling of i need to figure out my life you know like having uh existential crisis whenever there's a down period being like this is a normal thing right everyone does this when it's quiet you reevaluate your whole life and be like are there many ways i failed and how can i how can i how can i change everything tonight you know um so i've had those moments but now being like oh like yeah truly like trying to remind myself of this is going to be it's going to be a journey i'm not i truly thought i could figure this out within like a couple months i was like i'm gonna 
I want to turn the tide on this, but being like, no, this is it's an everyday just have to be an everyday thing. It's not have to be a lifetime of just being on this journey, you know? Yeah, like coming to that realization is tough, but like it's important. Like this is why I love like catching up with people too, is because you realize that like you're not the only person that's experiencing these things. Like I know that some people will like open up their Instagram or their Facebook or whatever and be like, oh shit, like so-and-so is doing X now and then you feel like crap. And then it doesn't matter even if it was like a, it doesn't even have to be someone you know. Like some people can just see um, a super successful person that they've never even met before, not even a celebrity, and then they just immediately shut down on their own or reevaluate their own life. But it's like, man, even they are going through it. You have no idea what they might even be like their every day was what what that is like or trying to put yourself in their shoes for a second yeah no it's i i did like several years ago even um deleted a lot of my social media accounts i could have in hindsight i could have like um deleted the apps you know or or can we or always like, go the extreme <laughs> yeah i went i went the extreme of being like i even remember deleting snapchat and i'm like i don't even use this like it's been <laughs> a yeah, like, year I and a half since it. i left <laughs> Yeah, I don't even open it, and I don't know why. I was just like, I can't even have this, you know. <laughs> I was like, I was like, Periscope, goodbye. Yeah, Fine. I was like, I had to I download so. Snapchat to then delete my account. Like it was like, I was like, yeah. it's not even an app on my phone, but I was just like, everything uh, gone, you know. Well, no temptation. Um, truly, because it was, I got to a point where like, I knew it was um, like in a very internal thing as well of like, you know, like comparing myself to other people and seeing what people are doing and. I remember one time, uh, this really uh, funny improvising comic in the scene. I was like, uh, like confiding in them, and was I remember I was like feeling so broken. Or I was like, I was like, man, I, I like, I was, I, I, I posted this photo of me as a kid when like my mom signed me up for like a modeling school thing, and I thought this was gonna make me feel better, and it didn't, <laughs> and. I was like so sad. I was like, the likes are coming in the comments, and I felt nothing. You know, I, was like, I, was like, I still, I was like, no, it's not working. It's like you know, this, I, I, the you know, it's not hitting the same way. And I remember they were like so nice, and they're like, yeah, no, I told you. I mean, they're like, they were giving me like sensible advice of like maybe just like take a break from social media. You know, <laughs> yeah, maybe don't find validation in external. <laughs> like, yeah, like they, were, they were trying to be nice answer. about it. Yeah. I'd be like, yeah, you know, like, maybe this wasn't. Yeah the best By Twitter. You know, way to go about it. yeah so i was like, like saying oh, you yeah, have a good you know? face for radio <laughs> yeah or Twitter. something <laughs> you're like what but they, they were so they were so sweet about it and and uh, uh but i was i had to yeah at one point i just deleted all my apps and um i think it was good for me at the time and eventually i got back on social media and then regretted deleting some of them because i was like oh there's friends who um you know i was close with anymore but being like oh you know like i've lost some high school friends that you mm -hmm. know were cool i had you know no issue with really but like now i now some of them like i feel almost an embarrassment <laughs> adding them again you know because yeah. uh, then people will be like oh i thought it was your friend this whole time you know people yeah. aren't really checking their friends like, uh, new like count. That. yeah <laughs> yeah so i i but i deleted but it was good because for that little while i i came to realization Oh, it wasn't all social media like because the feeling was still there i deleted the yeah. apps and the feeling was still there and i was like oh and that's when i felt dumb where i was like oh no i thought <laughs> oh it was it was an internal thing of me not feeling happy with what i was doing and i blamed it on social media which is people are using the app as intended they're posting the highlight reel of their life you know so that's obviously. just become the success model for those sites right like yeah, I, I noticed the interesting thing with TikTok is like I'm finding it's more like rough cut, just whatever, like just videos thrown together, craziness, and it's it's refreshing to see because you're just like it's it's not so polished and it's not so put together. It's it's not like the typical people that you would think would be getting like millions of views, but you're like happy that they are you're like oh that's great that this you know this random guy who loves like painting doors found a cool way to make uh, yeah. like tiktok videos <laughs> and like I've i like watched... that side of the internet but they they bamboozled us into thinking that it was social media that's making us unhappy i, I mean yeah I, 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 I think it's you though that controls like how you take something in like you choose what to do with that thought 
you can either let it bother you or you can like be like it's just an outside like it has nothing no value to to me whatsoever you know yeah i feel like the it i i agree with that to an extent uh the only part where i'm like i remember reading an article a while back of the uh this article was talking about how um facebook had um an ethics department um and uh God, or like i don't know if it's a department or just a couple people working in it yeah, yeah, yeah. of being like what is um uh, and their whole mandate was to like understand in what ways is facebook not operating ethically in terms of like are they putting a certain technology and not thinking about like how is this affecting people mm -hmm. but then they got rid of that department and so there were the main article was talking to the person who was um you know uh the head of that department and they were talking about how like there is there is some blame that can be put on social media being like they create uh like you know like the um it's like a funnel the, the, the red algorithm. the red circle around your yeah. notification that like we know that we yeah. respond to red yeah. and it's emergency you know mm -hmm. but that's just like someone liking your post you know that could be someone just sending you a message yeah. it's not like i use like your body starts reacting to you think like, i need even... to respond to this now yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. it is that like those things there is trigger uh, some responses. of those things are deliberate yeah, you know yeah. and even those talking to the guy who like regrets creating for twitter the uh uh ability to just uh continue a scroll oh yeah the guy who they said who, it was who, like who created that and the refresh was mint, like mirrored after like a lottery, like when you're at the casino, exactly. Like pulling down on the lever, like that same refreshing of like doing this motion Absolutely, was like an yeah. addictive thing that they could like play on easily by just adding that into the coding, basically. hundred percent. And the guy who yeah. created that, that, uh, exactly. for Twitter, uh, regrets making it because they're like, you know, like they're like, it's, it's a, it's, it's a well-made app. Like it's a, great function but being like um almost like the article was arguing that like um maybe there needs to be a few more checks and balances because we're almost like bypassing the conscious mind almost mm -hmm. and going into like you know to like the, the, the brainstem like like hitting parts of ourselves that yeah almost like neanderthal parts like we're just responding to stimuli in a way that we're not even aware of why we're reacting the way we are and we're being we're being roped into this kind of addictive thing without truly fully being uh, aware or understanding how yeah. like how this thing so so the argument was arguing that like um yes social media can be good but there are parts of it that are deliberately made to be addictive and so it is there is some part that we play in it in terms of like we can stay off it but there's other parts where you know they they made an app and they want people to be on the app so they made it I, know, I feel so strong when i just don't check my notification <laughs> that's great i mean that's, honestly, i see I 100 messages i've never read a single one of them. No, I'm just kidding. yeah i'm listen <laughs> no i'm just as like guilty that. i'm just as guilty where i see like the i had uh twitter up today and i was like writing a tweet for work and i just saw in the notification on the side it just said one notification and it, my eye just kept going to that notification <laughs> as I'm trying to think about this tweet. I'm like, what is it? <laughs> like, I need to know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you're getting a notification. Like there's a package at your door. You're like, I need to go see what that is right now. Yeah. I was like, I remember there was a piece like where uh, Ensign Cooper, like they strapped some, like, I don't know, like, uh, like whatever the little, is it the electrodes when you're doing like a, a electrocardiogram, like, like the little, things the circular yeah the yeah, little yeah. monitors to check like his his heart rate and stuff and they showed that hearing certain notification sounds got his heart rate elevated you Damn. know of like you're already like you're you're like oh shit a phone call or a message or what is it you know so being like it is um yeah i think i, I still love my phone you know like <laughs> <laughs> I, I love right. social media i'm on tiktok a lot but i am also i think that time off did give me a little bit of room for it but i came back because i love it man i'm addicted i can't lie. i'm addicted it's the, the year same thing i was as off the it check sucked, out. you know yeah it was, I, I missed everything i missed i did yeah the world like, I, was, I found my phone was boring 
Like I would yeah. like, instinctively, I would pick up my phone because you know, you're looking yeah. at your phone, and I would look and I'd be like, I had all the things that made my phone fun I've are no that. longer on here. So I remember you're even just looking at messages. Photos. <laughs> Truly, yeah, scrolling through past messages. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah. I, I would take photos up. of things and not know what to do with the photo. Like I'm like, oh, do I, do I, who's this for? I'm like, I, I was really asking. I was having like, I was having like an existential crisis. Be like, why am I taking a photo? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I'm taking yeah. a selfie right now. Where am I put, putting this? Yeah. Like just this is a nice a thing for time. what exactly? Just for me? Yeah. Like, I'm taking it for me. I would text it to friends. Be like, hey, look at this. <laughs> like <laughs> my friends became. You like, caption it. Yeah, be like, be like, uh, yeah, you guys, you guys check out this thing, and then yeah, maybe yeah, add like a social add, media add a groups and you try group texts. <laughs> <laughs> That's essentially what I was doing, yeah. But I did it individually, so every friend was. Like, It'd be great if you just had like network. an email, <laughs> yeah, an email chain. <laughs> Dude, honestly, I think I was going backwards. Did you describe it? Yeah, maybe I was reinventing the email chain. <laughs> you like pass this on, or you have luck for about three days. Yeah, <laughs> those things were so ridiculous. <laughs> I used to believe, man. I'm still embarrassed. Oh, like years ago, uh, when like maybe about a decade ago or more, uh, there was, you know, those Photoshop pictures of where it looks you're like, is this kind of real? But now we know it's Photoshop. There was a picture of a one, of a girl who was by a toilet and she had like hair coming out of her face and she looked kind of demonic. And the caption was about like, I was more religious back then. I'm like, oh, she took one of the one of the books out of the Quran and threw it in the toilet and then this happened immediately afterwards and i believed it i was like i was like a teenager like, oh my god <laughs> <laughs> this this is crazy and we were all like yeah looking like that's crazy oh my god wow. like, you know really but now i look at them like that was a that was a fucking photoshop photo yeah, like, yeah like someone photoshopped the photo and then and then someone took that photo maybe the same person who put the caption but someone i, I imagine I, I might not even be the same person found an image to try to, you know, like to get this message out. You know, it's like, it was essentially, it was WhatsApp before WhatsApp, you know? Yeah. 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 Of like oh, this fuck. email chain of like, look at this, right? This is what happens. Oh, if, you, if you don't disrespect the Quran, man, like you, you can turn to a what? demon immediately. <laughs> when, when did you start to, like you said, when I was religious. So when votes was that? And when did you start? transferring out of that was it comedy related <laughs> you're like i can't be religious to be live this lifestyle <laughs> this hedonist yeah, I lifestyle at, i looked at all the greats and i was like they're not religious you know? <laughs> they, are not, they are not reading the quran that's what it was yeah like i was, I was mostly just checking how how faithful they were and i'm like you know what? i found here's a graph my correlation between faithfulness and how funny you are uh, <laughs> uh it was i i think like uh it, comedy was a was a big point where like i I started becoming even practicing religion even less. And that was like around when I was like 27. But before that, like, um, I was, I was like, I knew even from a very young age, like in my early, like I was like 12, 13, around that, where I was, I knew I didn't care about being religious. Like I was just going through the motions. I didn't feel connected to it. My mom would make me up for prayers and I would fake pray, you know, like I do the ritual of like, getting my body ready like putting water in different parts of my body and then i would literally stand in front of the prayer mat and just time it out in my head and then roll up the prayer mat and then go back to bed uh -huh. and then my mom would wake me up be like no you can't go back to bed yet you got to read some quran so then she'd bring the a book to me and then i would put it on my lap and because my the wall like the the headboard of my bed was parallel with the, my door so you yeah. have to walk in and stick your head in to see what i'm doing I would prop my pillow because I'll put the put one of the books on my lap and just fall asleep, and so that I knew that I would hear. hear wait, wouldn't fall too deep asleep because I'd, I'd yeah, still be. Yeah, he's kind of nod off with one eye. Nod off, and then when she'd open the door and stick her head in, I would immediately jolt up, open my eyes, and just start whispering. <laughs> Did you remember? Yeah, you remember a few Lumbering. words. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it could be words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just making noise. So I, I did that. That was like your was mom's like, like, what a good 16. little boy. Yeah, or like, what was it? And I was like, yeah, I was like 18, 19 around that time, you know, when like, it, the stuff was happening. And before that, too, like praying and not not really giving a shit. But it was like, I think around the time when mom passed away when I was 21, that then I was like, oh, now I don't have this person watching over me who's like mm. making me pray, They're like go pray, mm -hmm. you know, go fast. Um, and I found myself slowly being like, okay, now I can actually live the life more close to how I actually feel but i had then my i was living with my cousins or my cousins were living with me 
and they were pretty religious so i was like fuck i still gotta like put on this act a little bit but it was a lot more relaxed than my mom or my cousin was like oh i'm gonna go pray do you want to come pray because you know a big thing is like praying together mm-hmm. so i was like mm, i'm okay i'm so i'm gonna i'm gonna set this one out <laughs> I'm, I'm play 2K. <laughs> yeah, so, so now you, you guys pray for me you know so yeah, you guys yeah, yeah. you guys, you guys uh, do it for me you guys praying, <laughs> that's great okay for me as well you know but i'm i'm gonna set this one out uh so i would i would i do that but i was still like still doing the fasting occasionally still praying a little like bit but it, holiday it type stuff like that there are cultural yeah. periods of time you were just like all right everybody's doing this so I'm, let me jump on and, and be along with it as well absolutely it's, it's like a christian that only celebrates like christmas and easter <laughs> pretty much i was doing that you know so yeah. i would do that and then even i felt the i used to feel really bad during ramadan like not fasting and then mm. pretending to be hungry like i felt like oh, oh, no what a performance no. i'm putting on <laughs> What a performance. Like I would I would come to like because sometimes you know, because the big thing is also like celebrating together and breaking the fast together. So I go to like a, 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 uh, you're like, like a full, house. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, I gotta pretend like I was fasting. So I come be like, yeah. oh man, this was so good. I haven't eaten all day. Woo, you know, just like you eat like, like a bro- piece of broccoli or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm drinking broccoli, like yeah. man, I'm so hungry. It's been starving. But- but I would, I would have to like. You guys got any soda crackers, right? <laughs> truly, I used to. Yeah, I would like. I, would, I remember I used to do a joke on stage of like how uh, Ramadan was hard for me. You know, that's why I had to take lunch breaks. You know, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so I would like because I would like yeah I would I would eat food and but I would there was still guilt around it so I couldn't mm. I couldn't have all my meals I would have a meal you know so i wouldn't have breakfast and lunch i would have breakfast or lunch you know or a, mm-hmm. or, or a brunch or whatever you know i have a little bit of something and maybe some snack but like i'm I, sacrificing i, I to sacrifice a little bit you know be like yeah, all right yeah. i'll be a little hungry you know yeah. like i'll do five hours of lead up time to it or four hours you know to it for it to be believable and it was truly yeah like looking back on it how ridiculous it was i had to there was a fine line where like i couldn't be overplaying it you know they're like wait a second yeah. you're doing a little too much you know you're like oh you're smacking you're listening like oh my god my tummy hungry like, yeah. just like oh. <laughs> you start doing stuff that's just not in your character you're like me yeah. so hungry exactly you're like what oh my god oh i could eat so much how Why much you do you eat? i'll tell you how <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, me so hungry. They're like, what is what is this character you're doing? You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. What is the what is this voice that's happening right now? <laughs> yeah. I just every time I get, I don't know. <laughs> it just like burn yeah. out. <laughs> uh, I'm so hungry. They're like, I don't you don't, I don't talk know. Can like I get that. leftovers know, or man. some shit? <laughs> this is my hungry voice. <laughs> you show up with like a bag of just like containers to take shit home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like, never went that, that far, but like people would give because they would make so much food, you know. Uh, and the family's my family is like quite large. Like my dad is one of ten, and each of his siblings have had like, it's like potluck at every minimum, time. <laughs> like two kids at minimum. You know, Damn. Um, and so like this quite big family. So yeah, so like, there would be a lot of food being made. So they're like, yeah, take some because then they're gonna do the same thing the next day. You know, um, and then eventually they hit a point where it's like, oh, there's too much food, so now we can eat stuff that's left over. Um, so I would take food, but yeah, like. I was still religious in my mid twenties, still putting on. And then once my like I wasn't living with my cousin anymore, and it was just me and my sister. My sister was on the same wavelength. She was also not all that religious, so she didn't care. But I would still like I, I didn't want to have like I, I was afraid to order bacon. I, I was gonna to say, what, what was the best rule break? Like, what was the thing that you could not do? Like you were like, my mom will kill me if I do this because it's so against this. And then once you're out of that, you're like, I cannot wait to do like X. For me, it was just like, I think just being able to like, just live more freely, you know? Like if I want to try something with bacon, just to see what it was like, I wanted to. Um, you just wanted like the choice. I just, yeah, that's all I wanted. I just, I didn't want to have to uh, pretend anymore that like I mm. really cared about this. Uh, the religion, even though like, I do still consider myself like I'm agnostic. I still like to believe in a higher power, but I'm not practicing the religion. I, in I'm on the same any form, you know. Uh, yeah. But I remember, like, uh, when I moved to my current place that I'm at now, like it's around the time when I started comedy. Like a few months later, I was like, I need to be downtown, close to comedy, and also I just want to be away from family to like just 
be more gulet, you know, just find yeah, out who yeah. gulet is. I bought um, bacon for the first time from a grocery store at like 27, you know? Yeah. And I remember putting it in the fridge and I was sick to my stomach. I was sick. I was so concerned about the, about like, my roommates are all like Christian. They don't care. They, they eat bacon too. Yeah. Um, but I was, I immediately, my, my religious side was like, God's going to strike me down right now. And what's going to make matters worse is when the police call my dad and say, your son died, but it gets worse. There was bacon in the fridge and that will kill my dad. You know, that's what <laughs> yeah, I was worried that'll, about. That'll take him right out. He's like, not oh, only did man. I lose a son, but he was eating bacon, but that's, he, he immediately, he's, he's done, you know? So I was oh, so scared, yeah. but like, it was, uh, it, after a while, like I used to, it, and then now I'm like, I still even around certain family members will obviously like, you know, I have to, it's it's a battle so like i i pick and choose who i want to have this battle with and mm-hmm. other people i'll just be like all right for you i'll pretend like i've never touched bacon in my life and then be like is there a way to get the bacon off this is there a way? <laughs> no okay i'll get something else then instead and pretend to be really disappointed like oh man that sucks Dude, that does look good right it looks good right yeah man it's the bacon you know it's it's I would love to. I would love to. I'll make a big scene of it, you know? God, you guys have a lot of bacon in this stuff. You guys think, I think of the people who, who don't eat bacon, you know? You're so, a bacon like, nation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, zoom out bacon nation, be like, God, you know, you guys got to put a sign or something like that up there just <laughs> letting let people it, let know. Let us know. <laughs> I just thought it was just a fun title, you know? <laughs> like, I thought it was Kevin Bacon. I That's thought it what was I thought. Bacon, I put Kevin. I don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was like you guys are paying homage to Kevin Bacon, great actor, you know. Uh, great actor deserves his own good place. I'm just it does, you know. yeah. Bacon Nation like that. <laughs> There's one question that I had here. I don't know if you've ever been asked this before, but I like stupid questions that are related to the guests. Have you ever considered starting an alcohol brand where you only sell 16 ounce cans or tall boys as they're referred to? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've never uh, personally thought of doing that, but like we have as a troop. <laughs> um like we did one season give out like uh tall boys cans like they reached out to some brewery to make a couple like um uh to maybe i think maybe the flavors that they already had to get a you know order a batch of those and then put uh around the can printed um photos of each of the boys you know nice Uh, and so we gave tall boys tall boys cans you know (laughs) yeah i'm Um, like it seems like right there (laughs) it it is it is (laughs) cbc get on this tall boys like fall truly yeah like (laughs) we we don't have like (laughs) yeah we got to get into all the markets truly we're trying to yeah we're trying to get into even the people who want low like non-alcoholic tall boys like we're we're trying to get into that too yeah (laughs) but we did uh when we when we were like very new as a troop um uh we used to go to the like the restaurant the the bar uh tall boys because they have like really good burgers um here in toronto and uh one day at one of the servers was like oh yeah it's the troop tall boys right and we're like oh yeah yeah we are and he's like oh it's funny like one day some people had come from seeing your show at toronto sketch fest and when they came to the bar, like, hey, are you guys affiliated with that troop we just saw? Guys... <laughs> and this is they thought it was like a show. Don Cherry's or, or Wayne Gretzky restaurant. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and it was before the show being like, we're all like, you know, just like trying to like, you know, like eat and live like, like, maybe we should I would do to... shows beside the tall boys place yeah. all the time. Just for that. Tell them like, <laughs> we'll give them a shout out in return for some burgers and, and yeah. stuff, you know, <laughs> like that's, that's how like, we were like, we're like, you know, forget the money like the food you know like we want want free eat, food. you know <laughs> it's so funny as artists we get so stuck in that like mentality of early on like you're just getting paid an exposure or you're getting a drink ticket or whatever and we, we're so like but we're still so happy with that deal we're still so like a free meal and a drink okay all right yeah <laughs> so i'll take it dude i'll take it i'll give you my art <laughs> can you hear me the whole time yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I can't. So weird, because the system mic is not on, but like. Oh, weird. Maybe that's... maybe your sound was going through like your headphones or oh, your, your camera. It sounds That makes fine. sense. It I mean, sounds it sounds fine. even better now, but. Wow. That's I didn't hilarious. realize because I'm just talking the whole time. And I'm like, at one point I was, I was like, huh, this, right. the light's not on like it normally is. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. So people were listening, the audio quality just improved. <laughs> if you stayed this far, you're like, oh, this is. <laughs> 
got a lot better. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Listen, I'd like they to got, have some surprises yeah. in, in, in the podcast. Yeah, we got an investor mid podcast who just upped the audio quality. That's great. Like, I guess it automatically just picked up audio from one place. It, yeah, yeah. Cause I have the mic here. It was using it's that probably, audio. yeah. And it sounded great. Like, so now you know if you're ever in a oh, rush, right. you got to do okay. a, a phone call interview with just while you're out and about. Like, I just yeah. plug in my headphones and I'm good to go. That's, that's amazing. I love when you like, stumble upon like <laughs> hidden shit like that. You're like, oh, that's there all the time. Just this plan B. Yeah. No, that's good to know. But yeah, no, it's I, yeah, I, let's I go back to tall boys though. Yeah. I, I agree with you 100 percent of like the, you're talking about the food for exposure. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. that's that was big, you know. Um uh because yeah, literally like starving at times, you know, being like, oh man, like I didn't have time to get food or or like you know, I'm working a part-time job and uh and so like, you know, the slim picking. So if a place is like they're gonna they're gonna bring for the comic sometimes you get a meal other times it would be like oh they'll bring a spread you know a, a selection of stuff for mm, people to that's eat from huge yeah so being like oh my goodness i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna eat good you know and then if they threw money on top of that you were like oh we're, we're <laughs> we'll great like that's every night. <laughs> that was the biggest thing of like of uh, because there's no um it feels like the jump from making no money to making money is at times so huge yeah that like uh i'm i'm i think just recently that i finally um get somewhat comfortable with the fact that i'm getting paid to do comedy because because mm -hmm. i yeah you know like dude your didn't, didn't do it the stand-up uh, didn't do unreal. the stand-up route went to sketch and being like yeah. oh you know like we're we're getting beer tickets and then like sketch fest paying us like a hundred dollars to then like i remember we won like this award um uh it's for like our, our video that like um was recorded for sketchfest and that came with that came with like a two thousand dollar prize that we were like we were like oh what does that what does that prize entail that like they're saying we can use this prize to like help market the video and then we talked to ourselves we're like do we just want the money can we just ask them for the money i mean like i don't know if we care too much yeah, of yeah. marketing the video we could each use five hundred dollars you know yeah uh and then we you know we eventually must have the courage and one of the boys sent an email and they're like yeah no problem we'll send it to check who do, who do you want to send to we're like oh sweet so like going from that being like oh man five hundred dollars that's a huge payday you know yeah, yeah like you'd yeah. have to like even comics who uh, you know assign to, to yucks like you know like are not making like sometimes not making like five hundred dollars uh for for a they weekend are, they're you working know? their ass off for they're working their right? ass off right yeah. um and so being like all right great you know like we take that and then going from that jump to then tall was and seeing the first couple of checks being like this doesn't like feeling almost like uh i was ripping them off you know be like <laughs> yeah, i'm yeah. sorry maybe They're there's a misunderstanding yeah, yeah, I, yeah. beer tickets and 20 dollars is what i'm accustomed that's to. that's fine yeah, yeah i'm yeah. gonna go work at metro while i do this like <laughs> if that's okay with you guys i'll still yeah. uber eats you know yeah, on the yeah. side and if you guys can just like yeah if you if you guys want to like give me like a six pack or something like that and wow. and a hundred dollars i'll take it you know but uh, yeah i don't you don't have to pay me benefits this, this is crazy <laughs> yeah truly and then being like wow this is like uh it's wild you know such a wild experience yeah i was gonna say like what does that feel like i mean kind of describe it a bit there but like starting from those early days of sketch to now seeing where you're at now like what what's something if you could go back and tell you know glad just started just saying yes to like yeah i'll be you in your troop like what, what do you think <laughs> you'd say to that person i mean i feel like i would i would do um that i think that would still be the same because i i like i enjoy doing sketch i definitely if i could go back i think the the big things would have been um uh, trying to tell me because imposter syndrome is so huge mm -hmm. the second you start making uh or the second i started making money at this you know and and coming into this uh this world where all of a sudden like the same work i'm i'm doing kind of the same work i would have for a sketch fest show or whatever but now there's they're like here's a thousand dollars and you're like okay here's two thousand dollars like okay i mean you get are you guys going to continue paying? Like, I don't understand how this, <laughs> yeah, this yeah. math works. Um, I think the biggest thing I would tell myself is um, uh, you might not feel like you deserve to be here, but 
you're here for a reason and just like um try to be a little less scared you know like just a little bit because i definitely was deer in headlights uh for first couple seasons uh and was afraid of everything and so being like yeah of like just speak up more and and try not to be as scared you know that it's it's that you have more room than you think you do Mm. would you say that's like the biggest thing that you had to overcome in those first like couple seasons of getting the show is just that that fear of like i like the imposter syndrome like you were saying oh absolutely yeah because um i uh like i i i never had even actually a, a dream of being in front of the camera like i always anytime when i saw a show i loved i thought about writing for that show mm. um and so this was both i'm both writing and in front of the camera so there was a part of me that was like what am i doing here this is not like this is not how i envisioned being on tv you know um or working in tv in general so that was a huge thing of like i couldn't i i was like so so i still am it's gotten better but i was so hard on myself every and it was so and it just made coming up with ideas even harder because i was i was shooting down ideas before i even said them out loud yeah you know you're filtering um, the fun at that point too right like truly because i was like, like i was like what I don't, could this idea everything be? sucks yeah. Yeah, 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 everything sucked. I sucked. I shouldn't be here. And so there were so many moments first and second season, third season, uh, not really. I think like it, it like felt like dropped so much. Like I wasn't feeling that same person. But first two seasons, a lot of just fear. I would at times be having like a full on, it felt like I was having a breakdown and they, they I had to film the scene. Like mentally, I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, you know, you're so terrible. You don't, you don't know what you're doing. They can see your fraud. Like it would just be so like, it was like, I'm like, I'm about to cry in front of camera right now. And that's not even what the scene requires. Mm-hmm. The scene does not need me to cry. <laughs> I'm about dude, to cry, dude, you know, dude, they're like yeah. script supervisors going through. <laughs> and so it's very like, yeah, very uh, yeah. emotional. Cause like, you know, you're carrying so many things like uh, while you're on this of like, this machine is so large. Like you're working with like 80 plus people around you who seem to be knowing what they're doing. And you are, it feels like the center of this engine, you know, like the professional you're supposed to be the one who's like getting the job done here. Like they're just supervising it essentially. So being like, I have to, I have to be on, you know, because Mm -hmm. that's what this show requires. All these people are getting paid to make sure that I look good. And then I have to deliver on my part of this deal. Um, and so I would have moments, yeah, just right before going in front of the camera where I would be feeling absolutely like shit. Like I would have to just tell myself it's going to be okay. Like literally like soothing myself, like rub my own chest and be like, breathe. it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. And just getting through that scene and then be like, all right, you survived another day, which is, I think in many ways has been my top of experience is like mm. every season I, I, I finish, I'm like, wow, uh, I came in thinking, I can't do this. I don't have what it takes to do this. And then I did it. And then I'm like, oh, I feel exhausted. You know, like that was, that was a lot of mental energy. <laughs> now I need a break. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm like, I need a break. So it's gotten better over the seasons um, of feeling more comfortable. And, but still, yeah, like it's still, it's our show, but I still find it very hard to uh, ask for help to take breaks. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is like the, like uh, truly one of the best work environments I've been in to date in many ways, you know, and some other ways, like in terms of like figuring out the space and how much power we have, you know, and like going through that struggle of like stepping into those roles or, or sometimes feeling we could step into those roles that that battle was hard. But um, in many ways, like I've never had a work where if I said, you know what, I'm feeling a little off today. Um, I'm, uh, I think I'm just going to take a, I'm going to take a day off, you know? And they're like, all right, cool. You know, yeah. um, there's nothing like, you know, this is, is a hard the deadline. The doesn't call, fall yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. like, they're like, oh, we're like, we don't, we don't have to deliver scripts for a couple of weeks. So you're fine. They, you know, take, take the, take the half day off or take the day off, you know, whatever. Like, yeah, if you can get an idea, great. But if not, don't. Yeah. And I still found it hard to even take them up on that. Like I, I like almost like 
I found pride in uh, torturing myself by being mm-hmm. like, if you can withstand this, this is how you do it. This yeah, is, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is like almost like that, this that grind work. culture has, has uh, yeah. got into my head to be like, the grind don't stop. And then infection, you know? dude. <laughs> it is. The grind it's, has to stop. <laughs> that truly for me is like, this burnout many, is uh, real. Burnout is real. And the well, burnout is why like, people have so many psychotic breaks and it's like, because they've been maxing themselves out. Like, yeah. And just not, Knowing you could stop, but being like, you feel immense guilt if you stop. Or like mm-hmm. taking the day off work, you're like, well, if I take the day off work, then I don't make that money. And then how am I going to pay for X, Y, and Z or whatever. But the second you have that, like, that chance where it's there, take that opportunity. Absolutely. And it's like, I, I'm immensely privileged because like, I, this work environment, like we are the show. And in many places, you don't have that same level of like power that like, or you don't feel like you do, you know, mm-hmm. because you're like, you're guilted into coming to work. And the thing you're saying of like, yeah, like I, I understand how like the structures, like if you don't work, you will die. You know, that's essentially, yeah. that's the, that's what capitalism is telling you. Like, if you don't work, you will die. You will starve. You will not have a home. You will not and be like, how is this? how is this the why is this a fair just thing just feeds you know? that grind culture yeah of being like yeah. like you can't only have a job you gotta have you side can't. hustles yeah and you, you gotta have, like, monetize those side hustles of income. yeah, yeah. Like, being like be like i do this like sometimes i like this is one tiktoker i watch who i'm still trying to get my like i feel like he symbolizes for me a lot of the hatred i have for working and capitalism mm-hmm. you know uh, he's loving it he's like swimming in it he's swimming, like he's got a, he's got a nice house in like new york you know like and lives in new york like like in manhattan or something like that, that. like nuts. like it's it's a multi-million dollar home oh, that they, he got it out with his partner and like built it up again almost from the ground up you know like took everything inside it was like Some it was taken like, care what of. is your life <laughs> truly and this guy like worked like at a company where i don't know what they do something advertising or marketing related and so he's clearly making bank you know um yeah. uh, but there's moments where he talks about like how stressful this is, but then his message is always one of like, and then you just do it, you know? And then be like, there's something about that that I hate to my core being like, you shouldn't have to be working this hard, no. you know? No, like no. Of, of being like, I would cry every God's day. Intention. That's not what, a, yeah. a job that makes you cry every day is not a good job. Blood, <laughs> there's something sweat, wrong, tears. you know? No, that's an HR violation. You should yeah. not be bleeding or sweating or crying at your job. Like breaking I, down thing, is a sign that like you're not being supported in some way. You every know? time I saw someone crying on the job, I was like, you should just quit. Mm-hmm. Cause like any job that I would feel like I, I feel like I should cry right now. I, you need to leave that job. <laughs> that is not worth yeah. your, your mental health or your mental well being at all. Or yeah, you, and, a and job you have I to run it. to. Oh, a no. job you have to sweat for unless you're a personal trainer you shouldn't be sweating for your job <laughs> i mean like the thing is like i i i i think work is cool like you know and and doing it but i just i do hate the culture of like how much you have to work and that mm-hmm. like like that you have the the what we've all signed up for is like you you need to work to survive and in fact you're commended for you know being like they came in on their day off you know, they, they haven't they taken st- a sick day. Yeah. In two first, years. The, first one in the gym, last one out the gym, being like, "There's other ways to do this. Yeah. There are yeah. other yeah. ways to do this." Like, I respect it being like, "That's what makes them great," and being like, uh-huh. "That also sounds like a person who maybe has an unhealthy relationship." I mean, there's people. I I do believe there are people who love work. Like they, sure. it's a pure thing. They love working and they find joy in their work and and coming to work. Or and, they're trying also to think, not think about Coke. <laughs> maybe. Maybe, truly. It's another distraction thing. We've come full circle. <laughs> I, dude, I, I, I'm telling you, like, I, uh, I love The Rock. I think it's so great. But people, some people like The Rock also make me sick because I'm like, what are you running from? Why are you working this hard? Yeah. You've made money that lifetime's worth of money right now. Why are you still taking on every project that comes in front of you i hate too that they think that like the only way to succeed is just hard work i'm like "Mm -mm." there's lots of people that work really hard and they go nowhere 
nothing. It, I'm like some some of it's luck. <laughs> some Truly. of it's who you know. Like that that has nothing to do with work. <laughs> you could just no. know somebody and then you're in. <laughs> like honestly, like the the I you know like yeah like that the work part. I feel in my heart is still important, but this world is not a meritocracy. Almost nothing in this world is meritocracy. Um, there's very few things where like you you pass the exam, but even then, like being like, oh, what makes someone more likely to become a doctor, an engineer? So there are factors, external factors that can help elevate a person. Some people can still, you know, improve you their know, skills buy, or whatever. Yeah, prove your skills, but like there's still something like, you know, coming from you have a family that's supportive, you uh, you have some shelter over your head, you like you feel like you can do it. Like there's people who have none of those things and they still do it. And I believe those people like they went through hell to make this a possibility. And I wish they didn't have to. Mm -hmm. Like it shouldn't require you feeling suicidal to make it to the other side. Yeah. You know, because you might not. You make very it to a well place where you feel like good. Not even like amazing, yeah. just just fine. Like I'm just I'm not in that dark place, but like absolutely that, to have to chug through hell, you're like no, that's that's like not it's attractive for me. No. I'm yeah, like, the, it's, not, yeah. it's like the whole starving artist thing too. It's like, do we have to say starving anymore? Like I don't think no. I don't think there should be any starving artists. I think it should just be like you can figure artist? it away. Yeah. <laughs> artist. Just, just be an artist like you know yeah and just because like, you might have to have another job doesn't mean you're not an artist like mm -hmm. <laughs> but the second you attach the word starving to it i think you assign yourself that mentality of like i'm a struggling victim well that's the thing because we are we are victimized by these same systems that everyone's trying to like you know a lot of people are trying to make a buck off you you know and so being like they could they could pay you but they'd rather not you know um, the system doesn't have to be like this where we're, we're also exploiting each other, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so like, yeah, being like, yeah, like I remember when this serious XM thing happened years ago where they were going to, I think they were going to remove a lot of like, or they were, um, oh yeah, they were switching like the Canadian joke channel to like mostly American comedians. Was yeah. Like bio with JFL or something. Yeah, where like they were going to be paying, I think, like, yeah, just like festival gala, like taping yeah, yeah. audios and stuff like, like that. But a lot huge. of people's comics, like, uh, in some people, like, a good chunk of their income was coming from their albums being played on rotation there. Like, they're making, like, some people hmm. were like a couple hundred dollars, but some people were making like tens of thousands of dollars, you know, um, which was helping them live. And that, like, I remember that moment uh, broke me. Uh, in a way that I've never recovered from, which was like all these people that I are like that it's it's not fair because all the people who I think are so fucking funny, they work hard as hell, and yet they are this close to starving. I was like, that's that's not a fair system. No. That's this is not a fair system, you know. Like it, like I think I think this system is broken. <laughs> like you know, that there has to be a better way to do this where people it's are not close to starving too. all the time, you know. Yeah. It, it's it's lack of like self support in like Canadian entertainment and culture because Canadian like culture has just become like whatever America is doing. Mm -hmm. Maybe three days later, we get like whatever that what's happening there is usually what we adopt perhaps in our own way, and we like support American culture so much more than our own. Like there's such a lack of even I think like inspiration for people to look within the country of like that's why i'm so happy to see like cbc actually like giving people so many breaks and like putting out so many shows and like exposing the country to the level of funny that's like in here and then yeah. in doing that you guys then knowing how shit the system is with this platform can then bring up people that you find funny and then they can bring you know what i mean it's this nice little chain and that will, I hope, stop the trend of people just leaving to America or going somewhere else and just mm -hmm. feeding into their economy. It's like, if you just keep giving back to your own community, it will grow. Like, there's no, there's no reason for it not to. No, absolutely. Because the entertainment's there. The funny, the talent is there. It's just waiting for an audience that's, like, hungry enough to pay for it. Yeah. At least to keep us alive. 
No, absolutely. I, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. What do you think about the um, like cask and then them trying to just, I think, just try to get stand up recognized as an art in general? I don't think that was even done prior to them bringing that to their attention. Yeah, I, haven't, I haven't kept up with cask in a while, but like in the early days, yeah, I, I, still, I still I still think on principle I support it because, um, yeah, I, I, because yeah, a lot of a lot of yeah, uh, entertainment is grant based, you know, or credits, or you know, fun, like the CBC is funded by the government, you know, mm-hmm. it's a government funded network, um, and so it's like you know, a lot of arts like you apply for grants of being like, if the government is is giving out this money, then yeah, comics like be doing being a stand up comedian is an art form. And it's a, it's a very hard art form. I'm sure just like other art forms to do, but it like it's disrespected in a way that like I I don't sometimes understand, you know. Mm-hmm. And and part of it I, for me has always felt like uh, uh, like I think sometimes people think it's it, because you can do stand up anywhere that they'll just figure it out. But being like it's so undervalued, you know. Yeah. Like you, you do stand up. Like it doesn't. You don't have to like stand. Standing means we'll do shows in any venue, no matter the conditions. You know, <laughs> outside, what outside. It doesn't matter. Like it, yeah. it. It's not about what's best for the comedy to like make your jokes stand out because there's a lot of fun people who can who can still do very well in parks. You know, go to parks or whatever it is and still do well. But being like, you know, th- they can do it anywhere. And so I think that idea is also part, I think part of that idea is also why the government's like, well, it's, you know, they, they can do it anywhere. <laughs> they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't need anything, right? They can, oh they can truly do it anywhere. They don't even need, they don't even need a stage, you know? <laughs> I think their excuse was like, oh, well, no one's ever brought that to us. Like no one's ever told yeah. us like that we should, you know what I mean? So it's like, they don't think about it. Then why is it ever going to become a thing for them to think about? And standups yeah. are all so messy and all over the place and into their own shit that it's like, who's going to unionize the comedians. <laughs> it, I, I, I really think it's though. It's a, it's a great thing. And I, and I hate that they're like, we don't think about it. I'm like, no, but you consume a lot of comedy, you know? Yeah, and I'm yeah. sure you, you these people have been, it. yeah, they don't, they're not thinking about it, you know? Mm-hmm. Of even Plus, like yeah, um, even even JFL paying Canadian comics worse than they do American comics and not getting access to the same resources. That being like, how dare you? You get so much of your funding from the government, and yet you sh- you shit on the, the, the your own they, citizens, you know? And, and like they're the ones that are bringing in the entertainment. It's like the organizers mm-hmm. shouldn't be getting anything. <laughs> they're just putting it together. It's like I get that there's some legwork and spring, bringing in venues, but like. When you're as big as JFL is, I don't think it's that difficult to secure a venue. You come yeah. in with like the JFL letterhead, but like the talent, they've been working on these jokes for like 10, 15 years. Yeah. And you're like, it's here's like, 300 bucks, kid. I don't, I don't even mind the organizers getting paid, but it's just the fact that like, yeah, uh, they just, they just treat Canadian comics like so poorly, you know? Which is insane. Yeah. It needs to change. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But like, yeah, that's why I'm happy to chat with you on this podcast here too and let people in on like what's going on with your life and get to know you a little bit better because I want to see more artists being genuine and open with the internet so that we're not all like trapped in this idea of grind competition culture and it's more like, oh, everyone's going through the same shit that I'm going through. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. To an extent, of course. Obviously, everyone for has sure. Their own yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Um, yeah is no, there I'm, anything you want to promote? We're gonna. I mean, do a close here for you. Yeah, check out check out my uh yeah my my Instagram G U L three D. I uh, I barely post on there, but but when I do, uh, it's hot. And then uh, I'm also on Twitter G eight use L E A D. Um, why I put eight years? Yeah, <laughs> and then Tall Boys is a show on all platforms. Uh, and season three just dropped last week. If you're in Canada, it's on CBC Gem, which I feel like every time I have to say, CBC Gem is uh, a free streaming app. Um, you can sign up for 
uh, an account and that does give you uh, premium content, which I don't, I have to look up exactly what it is, but I think there's certain shows that are, you can watch the most recent season, but you can't watch certain previous seasons uh, of it, okay. but that's not for all shows. So I don't know. Uh, I'd have to read up what exactly makes a show. What's the premium content? How's that different from the free account? But you can watch Saw Boys. We're on free, mecha- free uh, account. You should even have to make an account. You just go on there and and just watch it. There might be some ads in between um, yeah. uh, episodes and stuff. No, definitely go check out the show. It's absolutely hilarious. Um, thank you so much, man, for joining me today on the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> of course. And you're welcome back anytime. Um, if you're listening to this, don't forget to share this episode with your friend. Share, share, share the podcast. I always love that. If you're listening on Spotify and Apple, thank you. Try to leave a five-star review if you can and comment down below. But until next time, I've been your host, Johnny Rogers. Keep classy. You've been listening to The Johnny Rogers Show. New episodes air every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.